You are listening to the Talk Bible to Me podcast. Join Megan and Emily as they work verse by verse through the book of 1 John here in season five. Before we get started, a message from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Sydney English, the Director of Ministry Engagement at Go Ministries. Let me ask you a question. What could you do with a dollar a day? Well, here at Go Ministries, a dollar a day helps us provide resources to kids out in the Dominican Republic, helps get them off the street, provide ministry, mentorship opportunities, and basic needs for all of the kids in our four areas of ministry. Through sports, medical, church planting, and in our Go School, $30 a month will help provide these kids all of these incredible opportunities. Learn more at gomin.org sponsor. Hey guys, and welcome to season six, episode three of the Talk Bible to Me podcast. My eyes went off because I actually had to think about that one. <laughs> I am one of your, <laughs> yes, I am one of your hosts, Megan Rawlings, joined by my beautiful host, Emily Richardson. I called you my beautiful host. <laughs> I didn't even think twice about it, so. Woo! Okay. And so we are so excited because this week we are diving into the book of 1 John, starting in verse 1. And we are going to be doing it through the bold movement method that we talked about last week. If you did not listen to last week's episode, stop this podcast right in its tracks and go back and listen to last week's episode. So that way you can better understand this week and all the weeks moving forward. Also, if you have not read the book of 1 John all the way through in one sitting, I'm going to ask you to stop this podcast. And if you're driving, go to your uh, Bible app of your choice. I love the Dwell app. What's your favorite Bible app, Emily? Um, I've used version most often, probably. Okay, go ahead and click your favorite Bible app and have it read 1 John to you. Or if you are sitting at home, go ahead and open up your Bible and check that out. Read it all the way through in one sitting. It should take you 15 to 20 minutes. It's a very short book, but I want you guys to read it so that way um, everything makes sense in context of what we're moving forward with. So are you ready to get started, Emily? I'm ready. Let's get going. Okay. Let's do it. So the first part of our bold method is begin with prayer. And so, Emily, I'm going to have you pray over us. <laughs> All right. Sounds good to me. <laughs> she <laughs> laughed because she's like, dang it. I was so caught off guard by that. <laughs> Every episode is going to put me on the spot. You know what? It's good for me. Good for my little introverted heart, you know? <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> she's going to need She's gonna need to sleep for three days after this. <laughs> but yeah, I literally will. <laughs> All you introverts know exactly what I'm feeling right now, that like cringe. <laughs> okay, but the Lord is not someone that I'm shy around. So here we go. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for the opportunity that we can um, lead other women in learning your word. And I just ask first and foremost that you would speak through us, that everything that we say and teach comes from you alone and not from our own hearts or our own minds. Um, give us wisdom to share only what you want us to share. Uh, and I just ask that the women listening would have ears to hear your word, uh, that they would be willing to learn and to grow. And when something hits hard, that they would be willing to change and mature as you ask them to. So we just ask that this would be a blessed podcast, that you would care for us as we do this um, and lead us. And we thank you for the chance to do this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. The second part of the B and begin with prayer is begin with the Bible. And so um, because you guys have read First John on your own, hopefully by this point, we're going to read it um, out loud and in three translations, um, the passage that we're going to be studying. This week, we are talking about First John chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. And the very first passage uh, translation that we're going to be reading is Emily's favorite, the English ESV. Standard Verse. <laughs> That's right. So why don't you, since this is the Emily version, Emily standard version, Emily standard version. <laughs> why don't you read uh, verses one through seven for us in the ESV's translation? I can do that. 
That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life that was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim to also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing th these things to you so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Gosh, I love this book. It is one of my favorite books and that is one of my favorite passages. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into why in just a little bit. But before we do that, I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation, often referred to as the NLT. So let's read it in this translation. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. The one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the father and then he was revealed to us. We, were, we proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That one's so much easier to understand. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, American sounding. <laughs> yeah, the English Standard Version is a... Uh, it's pretty close to word for word. The actual, like only technical word for word that you're ever going to get is an interlinear and that will make no sense because they don't place their nouns and adjectives and verbs in the same format that English does. Um, but the NLT is thought for thought and sometimes people think word for word means that it's more accurate but that's not necessarily true. It's more about um, how it's structured thought for thought is still an accurate representation and an accurate translation. It's just going to make more sense because it's organizing right. words in a way that we're going to understand them. Right. So it's translating the thought, not necessarily the word placement. And the last mm -hmm. translation that we have is the new mm -hmm. international version often referred to as the NIV. Do you want to hit this one, Emily? Sure. Okay. All right. One more time. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Awesome. And the last step of our B method for bold method of the letter B is to annotate scripture. And because this is a podcast, we're obviously not going to be able to show you our annotations. But if you need help with that, you can go to our website at www.theboldmovement.com. We have blogs on annotation. We have a $2 um, how to study the Bible that has the annotation guides in it. So don't, you know, Google it. It's super easy to do. And we highly encourage you to do that because it's going to help you understand what you're reading. Well, let's move on to the next letter. Emily, do you want to talk about the next letter? Sure. All right. The next letter is O. So on your own, wrestle with the text. So this is where you want to um, start with maybe summarizing the passage in one sentence. If you can do that, then that means you probably have a pretty good grasp on what you've read. 
And then you want to look at what is the connection between this passage and the overarching theme of scripture. So um, if you listen to the last episode, Megan explains really well how there is this whole theme of scripture, one theme of scripture throughout the whole Old Testament, New Testament. So how does this passage connect with that theme? And then in this pass, is this passage directed toward you or your relationships? Um, and then Number four is what is this passage not saying, which is really important because that is where we start to take things out of context and maybe get the wrong um, interpretation of what we're reading. Absolutely. So let's begin, Emily. Are you ready? I'm ready. To summarize this passage. So technically we have two passages and so we could summarize it in one sentence, but I think because there's two separate passages, let's summarize it in two sentences. I think that's fair. Okay. okay? All right. Um, okay. I, I will summarize the first and you summarize the second. How about that? So I'll give you time to think and okay. process. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to say... This is my summer summarization, just reading it and wrestling with it on my own. I'm going to say the one, the Messiah that we have been talking about has come from heaven to earth as a true human. And he did what he said he was going to do. And because of that, we can share in eternal life. Well done. That was <laughs> tough. <good. laughs> yes, <That's> tough. <clears throat> That's what I'm going to say. Passage one is. That's okay. my summary in a one sentence. Can you summarize the second part? Okay, so this would be like five through seven. Yeah, I would say. If we are walking in obedience with the Lord, we will be walking away from sin and toward right fellowship with other believers. Dang. Okay. That was good. <laughs> Some super fast reading, making sure I'm that saying that right. Good. Yeah. And you guys see how easy it is to read it, think about it, and just spit out a sentence. Like, okay, let's say our summarization wasn't correct. Let's say that how I understood it, if I can summarize it in one sentence, then after I learn more from the extra biblical resources, or the more I wrestle with the text with the other questions, I can go back and change my summarization. It does yeah. not have to be right the first time. This is just helping you think through, okay, how do I make this? One sentence. And if you can make it one sentence, you've got it. So, yeah. you know, that okay. could be really cool too to look back on over time if you write your summary and then keep it. And then, you know, like a year from now, go back and look and see what's changed. Cause I even have yeah. notes in my Bible that I'll look at and be like, yeah, girl, that's not accurate. But it's cool to see that I've grown and things oh, have yeah. changed. <laughs> it's, it is so good. And it's part of you is like, I love her. She tried so hard and look at where she is now, you know, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. young believer. There you go. God love her. She's so sweet. And it, and it's, if you look at where you were, it's a lot easier to give grace yes. to others. Yep. Cause it's like, Oh yeah. I we all are sure. somewhere. That's exactly right. Yep. Okay. Second question. What is the connection between this passage and the overarching theme of scripture? So, I'm going to say, obviously, the one theme or story that is happening in scripture is, you guys messed it all up. That was really harsh. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to start I mean, it with that. But it's it, true. It, that is what happened. But it's like, <laughs> God created everything and saw it was good because he wanted to. Not because he needed to, because he wanted to. And then yeah. man went from wanting to be like God to wanting to be God, which is sin. And that's what we mm -hmm. are saying to God every time we choose to sin. Yeah. And because of that, we needed a perfect sacrifice who has the breath of God created in his image and likeness because that's what we are, right? Mm -hmm. And we needed something like that or someone rather like that who could die as our sacrifice because the punishment for treason is death. And when we sin against God, it's treason. And so Jesus came to earth 
lived a sinless and perfect life as the coming Messiah, the chosen one, the anointed one, God with us, Emmanuel, all the names, which is a whole study in and of itself, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then he died, resurrected on the third day. And that is when the church started. And now it's the job of the church, the bride of Christ, to tell the good news of Jesus. So where does this fit into that overarching story? And I'm going to say, this fits right in the place right after the resurrection of Christ where it's okay. The things that he promised would come true have come true. We have lived it. And now it's time to tell the world about it. And that's where I think it fits in the overarching theme. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I love that. Um, And I think too, just the idea of we have to be in his light in order to not be in the darkness. In other words, we have to have connection, fellowship with God to not live that sinful life. We need him. He is, that's why he's our savior. We can't, we can't do things on our own. So even that, just in that overarching theme of if we're not with God, we're in the darkness, we're separated. God is light. And yeah. There is no good without God. Right. So, okay. Three in this is this passage directed towards you or your relationships? And I'm going to say it's both and. I don't mm-hmm. think it's either or. I think it's both and. Um, I think it's directed toward you in the sense that how are you going to walk with Christ? I think I can take this passage and apply it to myself today and ask those questions. But I also think it's directed towards my relationships because in this instance, it's talking about my relationship with other Christians, my relationship with um, sin and darkness Mm -hmm. and my relationship with God. And so I need to identify those three things and where I stand in each. So I think it's a little bit of both, maybe more on the relationship with those three things than by myself. What do you think, Emily? Yeah, no, I totally agree with you on that. Okay. (laughs) And do you want to take the last question? Sure. Um, what is this passage (laughs) not saying? That's a hard question. Um, what is it not saying? You go ahead and start on that one. Okay. So, um, the first thing it is not saying is, um, it's not saying that God or that Jesus, um, is an idea or a concept. Mm -hmm. It is not saying that he is just this like created idea that we have. He was a physical person, a physical being that fulfilled the prophecies that were to come. Um, It is not saying that we are to uh, hide this news inside of us. And it is not saying that we can um, tell others the good news, the gospel, and share our faith by our actions. It is saying our actions will help lead to that, but ultimately people are converted by the hearing of the word. And so I have to physically talk to people. It's not enough to leave a high tip and say, God bless. Yes. Saying God bless with a high tip is not going to bring in anyone. Like that's not how someone's going to receive salvation. You have to tell Mm -hmm. them Jesus died for you because he loves you and he resurrected conquering sin and death. Um, So that is something it's not saying. There's this really popular yeah, quote yeah. that says um, something like share the gospel and when poss- when if possible, use words or something like that. When necessary, use when words. When necessary, use words. And yeah. people will share that all over the place. And it's like, it's always necessary. Always. Yeah. Like, I mean, <sighs> speaking of my relationship with my kids, like, sure, they can watch me live my life and get good examples from me if I never share the gospel with them. But if I never share the gospel with them, like how are they going to know why I live the way that I do? Exactly. The Bible says, how will they know if no one tells them? And how will someone be told if no one's ever sent and how, and it just goes on and on and on. And it's just like, it's scripture. It's scripture. And it says how beautiful are the feet of those who carry good news. And it's, Take the good news out there. The Bible does not say that you share the gospel if you're an extrovert and introverts get a pass. It does not say share the gospel if you're confident. It doesn't say share the gospel if you're popular. It says if you're a Christian, 
share the gospel, period. And yep. if you're not sharing the gospel and you are not trying to bring people into the kingdom, I hate to break it to you, sis, but you are being a disobedient Christian. And that is something that this passage is saying. It's saying, don't be a disobedient Christian and lie to yourself and walk in darkness. Embrace the light, embrace the truth. And if you don't have that boldness, pray that God gives it to you and he will. Yep. Yep. All right. Pass pass the offering plate. I'm preaching. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. What do you think it's not saying, Emily? (laughs) What it's not saying? All right. Um, It's not saying that we have any ability to save ourselves. Mm. It's not saying that... We will never walk in darkness. Sometimes we will. Um, That's a great point. That's why we need him. It's not saying that we are um, let's see. No, that's probably the the one I want to go with. Okay. I think that's really good. I like that we are, we will never walk in darkness because we do, we get distracted. We're, you know, born with an inclination to sin. So you're Mm -hmm. exactly right. Okay. Are you ready to move on to the L in bold? I am. All right. Let's learn the, let's learn more. (laughs) It used to be learn the material. Now let's learn more. We switched it up. (laughs) Um, I'm just going to use one little fun fact before we uh, go any further. Um, The original Greek here, whenever the very first verse, it says, that which is from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. In the Greek, these are present tenses, which means they are continuous actions. Mm. And so what it says is that was that which was from the beginning which we keep hearing, which we keep seeing with our eyes, which we keep look or which we have looked upon and we have kept touching with our hands concerning the word of life. And so these are continuous actions. And I think that's important in this context because it's John talking to his audience saying, these things are things that we keep on doing because it's true. And I like that because to us, it's, you don't share the gospel one time. You don't, you know, throw it out there and then walk away and think, okay, now I never have to do it again. I get to retire from um, ministry. There is no Mm -hmm. retirement from ministry. And so it's this continually, I'm continually proclaiming the good news and I'm continually finding ways to work it into conversation. So I thought that was really interesting. I love that. That's good. Um. In verse two, the life was made manifest. I think manifest has one of those connotations that's one of two things. I think it's either a churchy word that people Mm -hmm. use but don't really know what it means because it's in scripture and a lot of translations frequently, or it's this new age law of attraction, which is, um, I'm manifesting these things. I am speaking them into existence. I'm creating a manifestation board. That is the law of attraction. And that is, uh, opposition to Christianity. Mm -hmm. And so, no, you cannot speak things into existence. No, you cannot manifest things. (laughs) Like that is not how the Holy spirit works. He does not work on your timetable by what you want. So what I want to do here is change that word. And I'm going to go into the new living translations translation to really punch it in there because I think the connotation can be confusing Um, just because of what it means in the 21st century today. So in verse two in the um, New Living Translation, it says, the one who is life itself was revealed to us. So manifest is uh, revealed. It has been brought to light. It is something that has been um, shown to you. And that's what it means in the context of this setting for manifestation. So um, the life was made manifest. The life was brought before you and you could see it with your own eyes. It was revealed to you. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to toss that out there because I think 
this will, that word will come up a lot. And so yep. just when you're reading scripture, and I think if we have a good grasp on what that is. Yep. Definition. So important. Yeah. That's good. Um, I wanted to jump back to verse one real fast, which kind of connects to that about the whole manifestation and all of that. Um, if you go back and read any of John's other writings, um, you see in his gospel, I guess not any of his other writings, but in his gospel, he begins it very similarly to this. So verse one, it says that which was from, from the beginning. Um, but in his gospel, it says in the beginning was the word. And then if you go back to Genesis 1, 1, it's in the beginning, God. And so the significance of just this first little start of how he starts his epistle here is that this is a message beyond time, beyond creation, beyond history, beyond our existence. So it's not from man. He's This is his way of claiming, this is not my message. This is not um, just something that man wrote. This is God's words. This is from the beginning. This is this is God. And then um, the neat thing is that then in Jesus, this word of God becomes personal and able to be understood and even touched by humanity. So this, this over, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but this thing that is beyond us, beyond our understanding, beyond our existence is then connected. That's that kind of that manifest is then realized in the form of Jesus coming to earth to something that is actually able for us to even literally touch and understand and comprehend his word, if that makes sense. Yes. What a great observation. That is really wise. I'm I'm glad you brought that up from Genesis to his gospel to now. It's mm-hmm. in the beginning, God created. And then in the beginning was the word. So it's Jesus was part of right. that beginning that we hear in Genesis. And now it's just confirmation that which was from the beginning. Right. Jesus, the one who we keep talking about in right. all of these passages. That's a really good observation. Right. So it's not our breath and our our words that bring things into existence. It's God's. That's exactly right. Um, Yeah. Um, fellowship with us is fellowship with God. Um, I just want to stop here for a second in verse three, where it's talking about fellowship. You are not designed to do life alone. And we know that because we can go back to Genesis, um, in the first few chapters where God specifically says it is not good for man to live alone. And that doesn't mean that we are promoting codependency or anything wild like that. But this is why it is so important to have a local church body, um, to have that fellowship with Christians and to just celebrate life, do life with people um, because we are relational beings. And that is something that is confirmed here in this first chapter. Our fellowship is with the Father. So we are in communion with the Father through Jesus. He is the one who makes us able to go before the Father because in um, when we receive the punishment, God cannot be in the presence of sin without destroying it. And so Jesus died on the cross in our place, a sinless man who had never sinned before died in our place. And then when you accept him as King, as Lord and savior, what you're doing is you're putting on his identity. So when God sees you, all he sees is the perfection of Christ Mm -hmm. because his blood is covering our sins. And so this is just confirmation of that, that we are in fellowship with God um, and fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So it's this fellowship we have is through what Jesus did. And I just wanted to point that out. I know it's like obvious there, but I just kind of wanted to walk through that with you guys. Yeah. I have a um, a little Greek note too about that. The original word for that fellowship, the, the Greek word for it is koinonia. I think I pronounced that right. Um, you did. Good job. Oh, good. It's the Greek classes I'm taking. Um, But it's the root word (laughs) common or shared as opposed to having your own. So um, the Greeks use this word to describe partners in business, joint owners of a piece of property or shareholders in a common enterprise. And then in the New Testament, it refers refers to Christians who share a common faith, who share their possessions and who are partners in the gospel. So this is, I mean, it literally means this fellowship is common, their things they had in common or the things they would share together, not just 
the things they had on their own. So anybody who tries to say that, well, I'm a Christian, but I just stay home and church is just at home for me. I don't actually go to church. I just, you know, I have a relationship with the Lord and that's enough. It's not like we were made to have fellowship. And if we're not in fellowship with our brothers and sisters, as we'll find out as we keep reading, then we're not actually living in the light. We're not actually living in obedience to what Christ has for us. And it's so much easier to fall into temptation and to fall into darkness when we don't have that accountability and encouragement um, from our fellow Christians. So Um, I love that we write this to make our joy complete. Um, I believe the Greek word there for complete is the same used for uh, perfected to make it perfected or matured. And so I just, I love that. And joy has a lot of the same roots as gratitude. And so I do this to make my gratitude and my joy complete. Um, And God is light. And I am going to use the example they always taught us in youth group because it has helped me. Um, I live in Southern Ohio and not too far from us, we have a lot of caves. And so we have you know, we do like cave tours and different things like that. Um, and when you walk into a cave, it is pitch black, like there is no light. And so, um, unless you walk outside to where the light is, like you can't, you can't even see your hand in front of your face unless you have a flashlight. And then because your eyes have adjusted to that darkness, when you walk outside and the light is there, it's blinding. It's like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. it physically hurts, um, Mm -hmm. because your eyes have not had time to adjust to that slowly. The same thing can be said when you're in a house and it's really dark and then you walk outside and it's real cloudy. And on like super cloudy days, it feels like the sun is reflecting a lot. Maybe that's just me, but it's like when there's a Mm -hmm. lot of white clouds in the sky, it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm blinded. Mm -hmm. And yes. And, and I think that's one of the reasons when you sin or get complacent in sin and darkness It's so much easier to stay there because it hurts Mm -hmm. to be exposed to the light. Yeah. But if you never expose yourself to the light and adjust to the light, then you are going to be miserable and you will never see your hand in front of you and you will never see the beauty and joy and creation of God. And I think the same thing applies to this metaphorical darkness versus light as well. Yeah. And I even today when I was homeschooling my son Judah, we had like the opposite happen. So we were sitting by a window. It was super bright. The sun was coming right in by the window. He was doing his math work on his worksheet. And he said something like, oh, it's so bright. I feel like I need to move it to a different part of the room. So we moved it to a darker part of the room. And when we moved it, it was like we, our eyes couldn't adjust and we couldn't see clearly. Everything was kind of fuzzy because it was so bright. And it's almost like you have that same effect. If you are walking in the light, walking with the Lord, not walking in sin, then if you go back to it, you don't see clearly. It's not like it's not as crisp and clear and easy to see. And you want to go back to where the light was because it doesn't yeah. hurt your eyes so much then to move. It's not like fuzzy. It's not comfortable. So you're like, it's not comfortable. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That works both ways. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any more notes on that for learn more? Nope. I don't. Okay, good. Let's move to our last letter, which is D, do something with what you've learned. And so I'm going to ask a series of questions and we will wrestle with the application and then figure out what's next for us. Are you ready, Emily? I'm ready. Okay. Actually, I'm going to have to put my glasses on for this one. Is this passage informing you of something or calling you to do something? Yes. Both. (laughs) Good answer. It is informing us of how to live a life of uh, glorifying to God, but it's also calling us to walk in the light and to avoid Mm -hmm. the darkness. Yep. Okay. If this passage is calling you to do something, which it is, is it a faith action or a physical action? Applications may fall into two general areas. I'm going to clarify this. This is from, uh, I think it's from Gordon Fee's book on um, exegesis. Um, Applications may fall into two general areas, faith and action. In practice, faith and action should ultimately be inseparable. A genuine Christian could not display one without the other. So my question is, is uh, is this passage a faith action 
or a physical action? I would say probably more so faith. But it's physical too. It's both because it's faith in the sense of connecting with the Lord spiritually. Yeah. And not living in sin, but then it's physical because you're supposed to be in physical fellowship with other believers and walking in obedience to him, even physic. That's a physical thing too. So sure. Because you have to make conscious decisions to do or not do. Okay. Are you ready for the last question? We'll what, now? <laughs> what, what now? What now? What do I what do I do with this material? Well, mm. do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Go ahead. Okay. Um, what now? Well, I make sure that I have a body of believers that I am in frequent fellowship with. And for me, mm. um, my husband's a pastor, Emily's husband's a pastor, and obviously the church body is really important. But I think it's even deeper than that. I think it's more than showing up to church on the weekends. And outside of that, um, I have a group of girls that I meet with once a week on Zoom. Emily's part of that group. And um, we pray for each other. We fellowship with one another. We study scripture together. And it's just a really good time. And I think finding that fellowship is the next step because when you have that fellowship where you can exhort one another and encourage one another, um, you're going to be able to walk in the light a lot easier than you are walking in the darkness because light will walk with light and darkness will walk with darkness. Yeah, that's good. I would say the what now for me, um, I think the importance of getting in the word because if you don't know that word, which is from the beginning, that which we have heard, which we've seen. Um, if you don't know the message that we've heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light, if you don't know that, if you've not been reading that, then how are you going to be able to live in the light if you don't even know what the light looks like? So I think that that is um, also super important to be studying your word, getting in the word, which we're doing right now, which is awesome. But even on your own, reading the whole of scripture. I mean, I think that When you ask that question, um, how does this fit into the theme of scripture? If you don't know what that theme is, then that means you probably need to get in your word more and and read the whole Bible, not just little pieces of it, so that you start to see those themes come together. Yeah. All right. I love it. Good job, Emily. This has been a lot of fun. I like this new um, format. I like that we're following the old method. Yeah, yeah, and I hope that you guys uh, listening have enjoyed it as well. Make sure you tune back in next week as we dive into the next passage of Scripture. Can't wait to join you guys. Um, before we log off, make sure you stay because we have a message from our sponsor again. And uh, other than that, Emily. Go out and be bold. Bye, guys. <laughs> You were listening to the Talk Bible to Me podcast, hosted by Megan Rawlings and Emily Richardson. This has been a production of 1801 Media in association with The Bull Movement. For more information, please visit www.thebullmovement.com. Hi, I'm Cindy English, the Director of Ministry Engagement here at Go Ministries. Go Ministries empowers local leaders to make disciples. I am living proof of that empowerment. Because of this, I'm going to sponsor a child through our Disciple First Sponsorship Program. This helps us provide education, resources, mentorship opportunities, and more to kids in the Dominican Republic. Would you join me in sponsoring a disciple at $30 a month at gomin.org sponsorship.